In this video, we're going to learn about the effects of uncertainty and how it's very, very important to understand significant figures and how they affect um, the data that you're reporting and what you can take from it. Um, so let's say that we're trying to determine density of something. Um, we take the measurement of its mass and we find that it's 1.2 grams. Um, and we take the measurement of its volume and we find that it's 2.4 milliliters. And this is just using the equipment that we have. Now, the uncertainty in the measurement of mass is 0.1 uh, grams in either direction, meaning that although we read 1.2 grams, because we can't be very, very certain of that last digit, that 0.2, um, we, we can say that the range that it truly could be is 1.1 to 1.3 grams. It's definitely in the ones, and it's definitely between 1.1 and 1.3, but we just can't be 100% sure that it's really spot on the 1.2 grams. Um, similarly with volume, the uncertainty is plus or minus 0.1 milliliters. And so the acceptable range of true values of volume could be anywhere between 2.3 and 2.5 milliliters. Um, now, this gives us, uh, when we combine the values to find a density, this gives us a significant range of possibilities. So for example, um, if, we, if, if the true mass were on the high end of our uncertainty, if the true mass were 1.3 grams and the true volume were on the low end of our uncertainty and it were actually 2.3 milliliters, then the highest probable density that we could calculate is 0.57 grams per milliliter with the appropriate number of sig figs. And the lowest possible density would be where we have the lowest mass within that acceptable range and the highest volume, which gives us the 0.44 grams per milliliter. That is a range of 0.13 grams per milliliter um, between the highest and the lowest, which actually is a very, very significant uh, difference. It's about 30%. Uh, 0.57 is about 30% higher than 0.44. So there's a pretty big uh, variation here. Um, so let's say though that we change the instruments that we use and we end up using a balance that's uh, precise to the hundredth of a decimal, uh, where that hundredth of a decimal, uh, sorry, hundredth of a gram is uh, what we could have a little bit of deviation in. Well, if we measure and we get the mass as 1.18 grams, um, and actually the device that we used in the previous case would be measuring uh, 1.2 in that case, right? Because it's not quite to the same precision. Well, let's say that we get 1.18 grams on this more precise balance. Our uncertainty is plus or minus 0.01 grams, which means that our true measurement has to be somewhere between 1.17 and 1.19 grams, which is really, really narrow. Similarly, if we found that our volume was 2.42 milliliters, therefore our uncertainty is to the nearest uh, plus or minus one hundredth, and we have an acceptable range of anywhere between 2.41 and 2.43 mils, which is very, very narrow, this, this uncertainty. Um, the highest possible density that we could get with the appropriate number of sig figs would be 0.494 grams per mil, and the lowest possible density would be 0.481 grams per milliliter. And that range is not 0.13 grams per milliliter like before, that is 0.013 grams per milliliter. Um, and that shows that we are one order of magnitude more precise using these measuring uh, instruments than we were in the previous case. Again, we had 0.13 grams per mil in the previous case, but when we use something that is 10 times more precise, that measures to the hundredth instead of the tenth, then we're going to have significantly more precision and our range is going to be 10 times less than it was in the other case. Um, so take home here is that it's very important to, uh, when you're taking measurements, to report the right number of sig figs according to uh, the instruments that you're using. And of course, when you're trying to decide what you're going to use to make a measurement, you really should be using the most precise thing that you can uh, because it really plays a big role in um, the quality of your results. Hope this video has helped and let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below. Thank you.